Welcome to the second season of Talking with Top Podcast. I'm your host, Top Carter. Today's episode is sponsored by TJ Everhart Consulting, LLC, developing the world's best employees and organization, one training strategy at a time. Today, we have our special guest, Ms. Angela Duncan. She is a fellow podcaster, entrepreneur, and a best-selling author. Please welcome her to the show today. Welcome, Miss Angela. How are you today? Happy Friday. Thank you. So before we get started, just tell everybody, where are you from? Yeah, so um, I am a survivor of childhood abuse and trauma. My mother was an alcoholic and my stepfather abused me. We grew up in poverty and I moved more times than I can even count. And so when I was 18 years of old, I decided that situation was not healthy for me. I moved out and started um, my career as a five-year student in college. It took me five years to get through school because I did pay for it myself. And I worked nonstop, different jobs, just trying to figure things out. And I thought that I wanted to be a financial advisor, work on Wall Street. Some, I think there was a movie at the time that probably inspired me to do that. So I became a financial advisor with a group and went through the tech bubble, decided that that was not the right route for me. Um, I also was getting married and so moved to Florida, became a top uh, brokerage, Remax brokerage co-owner. We had the top brokerage in the country, top 10 for many years. And I love, I've always loved numbers. I've always loved real estate investing. Um, the uh, marriage did not last. We're still good friends today. And so I moved to Miami. I started an insurance company, built that, sold that. And now I am doing very similar to you, just sharing the message. And I've gotten a podcast, Empower Her Money. And I love just being a podcast host and meeting new people. That is wonderful. That is awesome story and just to have businesses that you were able to build and then also sell very impressive <laughs> very impressive all right well thank you for sharing you know a little bit about yourself um you kind of went through some of my questions so i just get you to elaborate <laughs> all right so what made you um what inspired you to become an entrepreneur? I think the the lack of control during my childhood, not being able to control my environment, um, the people that were around me, I knew that when I was going to be in business for myself, that I needed to have more control over my situation of the outcome. And really, you know, the the work that you put into it you get to see the benefits as the owner more so than you do as an employee. Now, when I worked in the financial advising world, I was an employee. So I did work for Bank of America, large corporate, large corporation. So I got a taste to see what that's like. But the reason why I left that opportunity was because I wanted to move into a different role. And my manager at the time said, you know, I don't think this is a right fit for you. I think you'd be better off over here. And I never want someone to tell me that I can't, at least try a new opportunity, whether or not it would have been a great role or not, that's for me to decide. That's for me to put in the effort and determine that. Um, so being a business owner and an entrepreneur, no one tells you that you can't do something because you get the opportunity to give it a shot. And if it doesn't work, great, then you pivot and you kind of change your role. But at least I want the opportunity to prove to myself that this may or may not work for my type of personality. So that's why I left the corporate world and said, you know, I'm just going to go and be my own boss. And nobody can tell me that I can't do something because I would never want, to, I would never tell that to anybody else. So why would I allow for someone to do that for me? Absolutely. I think I'm right there now. That's where I am now in my career is where um, I just know that it's more. <laughs> and I just know that what I'm doing right now is just not it. I feel like I'm at a time in my life where I just want to control my day and not have it controlled by somebody else. So I totally get that. I don't know what that I'm going to do, but that is one of the things that I have set in place for me, a goal for myself. Um, I placed um, 
a little internal goal of three years to transition into full-time entrepreneurship. So I am discovering that right now as to what it is that I'm going to do. And like yourself, I have worked in the banking industry for years before I went into retail um, recently. So I have a, uh, you know, like a full-time background of just different things. So, but now I just want to take all of those things and do it for me, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So, but yeah, so I agree with you. Definitely. I am definitely on that. I'm sorry. That's kind of where the podcast for me was, was born because I've had 25 years of being in different financial industries and I love talking about money. I love numbers and spreadsheets and everyone, including yourself has a story. You know, there's something that you have learned in your life about money that you can teach other people. So to have a podcast and have an amazing platform that can be free to so many people to now share the, not only your experience, but you know, other experiences as well. So I love probably very similar to you. I love meeting people on podcasts. I love mm -hmm. talking about, you know, different money situations and just educating people. It's been a lot of fun. Absolutely. Now I will say, you know, coming from a banking background too, that's something that I do excel at. Like I can literally take small amount, whether it was my income or just running my household and I can make it appear bigger and I can do more with less. And that's something that I've just been gifted. Even when I do my family reunion, I when once all of the money come in, I'm able to not charge them a lot, but still give them a great experience. So I am all about budgeting, um, you know, being money wise. And I taught that to my kids as well, you know, to learn how to save and how to make your money, um, you know, grow for you. And I also teach it to my friends because they'll ask me, how do you do such and such? And then I'll just kind of tell them what methods works for me as to how I achieve certain things that some of my friends or people that I meet, they may ask me, you know, how do you do this? And I like to share that as well. So definitely, because you got to have money. Yeah. You got to know how to spend it. <laughs> you got to make, make sense to me. I think your business idea might be coming from that because one, I love how you said it was your gift. Like, you know that this is your gift. Not many people can do and think the way that you do when it comes to money. So it's a gift. So it's meant to be shared. So two people are coming to you and asking you for advice. They already look at you as an expert, right? And so that's a lot of times how you, you start to build your business is you figure out what your strength is or your gift and you figure out what are people asking me to help them with? And then that's kind of where your idea comes from the entrepreneur role of, wait a minute, people are asking for this how do I get paid to do that and still be able to help other people? So I love that you called it your gift and that's, you know, self-awareness is amazing. Yes. No, that's one of the things too, with this podcast, I have went on a self journey and mm -hmm. it's been awesome because I have just learned some things, whether it was professionally or just kind of how I am and, you know, my personality. So I like when you said that earlier, because sometimes you can be in a role and it doesn't fit your personality. And so you have to make sure that you are in the right role that meets you so that you can be your very best. And so I am learning to do things better than I have before. So I'm intentional about understanding me and my boundaries. And so that's another thing that I'm definitely on. And this podcast lets me do that mm -hmm. because to be honest, I'm quite private. But I find myself sharing things, you know, about my life, whether it's I'm divorced as well and not trying to date because it's crazy, but I do want companionship. So I share that, you know, in some of these episodes, you know, and things like that so that my audience can get to know me a little bit better. But definitely self-awareness is where I am right now in everything in my life. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's ask you. So, OK, so tell me about so you already told me because one of my questions was whether or not you had a nine to five. So we already know that you have um, one of the other things that I wanted to is like, how did you get to the point where you decided to write a book? Yeah. So I this year really has been a transition year for me. You know, my divorce was finalized last year. And I moved to Miami and I just wanted a fresh start. And so the first thing that I did was look internally, you know, 
who am I? How could I be the best version of myself? And what's next in front of me? And I've always had this idea of writing a book because it's important to me um, to teach financial education. And my why really came out when I decided to really sit down and write a book. And the why that I learned about myself is perhaps if my mom had better financial education or had money in the bank, she would not have stayed in that abusive situation and I would not have endured the, the abuse that I did. So I never want a woman to feel stuck. I never mm -hmm. want her to feel like she has to stay in an unhealthy relationship because she doesn't have money. She doesn't have the means. She doesn't have the knowledge. So if I can take the years of studying money and just put it in a very basic format, and that was how this first book was born. And I did hire a coach. He had just written, you know, many, many books. And so when you're looking to do something new, you want to go to an expert, right? So I had someone who was helping me with the book. Um, I self-published on Amazon. I learned a lot about how to do that. And then I hit bestseller in four categories, including beating out one of my mentors, which is Dave Ramsey. And Ooh, him and Amazon. yeah, so um, just learning all the different things that Amazon has to offer but also utilizing the book now to be able to get in front of other people and teach. So the premise of the book is to kind of um, pique curiosity. I don't go really far in depth with money. This is my first book. And so I wanted to just start a conversation to get people curious, to, to let people know that money is a tool. It's not something to be scared of. It does not care if you're a man or woman, does not care what you know, doesn't care what race you are, where you live, you know, it's a tool. And if you can think about it as a tool, like your car, like a pen, like this computer, then change your mindset around money. And you want to learn how to use the tool properly, you have to study it. So writing a book and having people have access to information um, was my big reason behind it. So it was just an amazing experience. And now that I've been through it, you know, I'm already on writing book number two, but how can I reach more people and just make sure that they have enough education about money so that they can accomplish whatever it is that they want to accomplish? Wow. I love that you know exactly what it is that you want to, you know, do and help. So absolutely. You're fascinating. Oh, thank you. <laughs> love it. All right. So we have to talk offline a little bit about um, some things I want to run by you. Absolutely. Okay, so tell me about your empowerment um, platform. So you did say that, you know, you want to show people how to do this. So tell me a little bit more about the platform. Sir. Sure. So when I sold my last company in February of this year, I honestly thought I was going to retire. I had burnt myself out with the insurance industry. It's really tough in Florida. And I wasn't great at hiring and training people. So learning what my strengths are. I'm, I'm great at going out and networking and meeting people and people liking me and wanting to do business, but finding enough help to help me. Um, I think as women, we often struggle with that. Like we're more than willing to go help with people, but it's hard for us to ask for help. So I burnt myself out, thought I was going to retire. And then I met an amazing group of ladies here in Miami, and we were just talking through some business ideas and came up with the name Empower Her Money. And at first I thought I was gonna coach, like I'm gonna coach women one-on-one, -on -one. I'm gonna teach them about money. But what I find is it's such a scary topic for people who've never studied it before, that mm -hmm. that wasn't the right way for me to deliver my message. And so then I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna do a podcast because everybody has a story. And this way I can help people share their stories and it's not just me teaching. And now I've got others helping to teach and it's a free platform, put it on YouTube and allow for people just to absorb the information. And the podcast just really took off. And within six months, I've got a hundred interviews. I'm in the top 5% globally, but now people are coming to me and asking me to like speak at events and talk about money. I've been invited to go internationally to talk about money because women all over need to know about money. And it's so different culture to culture. But this, the doors now that are starting to open and be in front of me, you know, I, I'm a Christian woman, so I believe God's me got too. a plan. Yeah, so God's got a plan for me and realizing what my gift is as well. Now it's my responsibility to share it. 
And whatever he puts in front of me, I'm learning just to say yes, no matter how scary it is, because it definitely is scary a lot of times. But I know that that's me growing and I will continue to have experts around me to help teach me how to speak properly, how to do podcasting, you know, how to write the book, because if I'm going to do it and put in the effort, I want to make sure it's done correctly so that people absorb the information that I'm trying to give to them. Absolutely. You know, I had interviewed a um, actor and that's one of the things um, that he said to me and I'll just shout him out is Tyrone Fetters. And he told me that anything that you do, you have to go trying to do it. And so that's why I started um, right now. Like I say, I'm doing a digital marketing class so that I can learn how and also going to take interviewing because I know that you can only go so far with um you know, people liking you or seeing you and, you know, because when I first started, I had more views, but you got to really learn how I got to learn how to really interview, how to make it a story. And so those are some of the things that I'm doing behind the scenes for, for my podcast so that I can get better and grow and just develop. So absolutely everything that you're saying is things that I am putting into place. I've been networking and I've been meeting people and I don't look at it by chance. It's like, the people that will reach out to me or that I'll reach out to, they'll be just extraordinary. And that's part of what my platform is about is, you know, talking to those um, entrepreneurs that are making a difference in their community. And I literally get people on this platform that are doing real stuff. And they also that they'll reach my audience in a way and inspire them. So, cause when I get feedback from work and other people, they'll say that person was awesome. You know, and that's exactly what I want to do because I know I have good people on and I know my content is good. I just got to get it, you know, trending better, but that'll come. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Podcasting is a business just like anything else. You have to learn, you know, the ways to be able to promote it and what works and how to reach people. Um, because you only get a couple seconds sometimes. So I'm, I'm finding that like Facebook reels or YouTube shorts or Instagram reels, um, more people are paying attention to the reels than the actual posting. So Mm -hmm. I have been more focused on putting the video content piece on the reels so that it can have like a catchy phrase just to get their attention. Then listen for that minute and then go back and listen to the whole episode. So you've got to learn all of the, you know, intricacies of, of the business as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So when did you discover your purpose in life? Because you definitely know your purpose. Uh, I don't know that I've quite discovered what it is. I know what my gift is, which is the ability to learn about money and to teach it in a simplified way um, because I'm very passionate about it. So I feel like that's my gift. I don't know that I have found my purpose. And the reason why I say that is because sometimes I think when you find your purpose, you're like, okay, that's done. Now what? So I want it to always be a journey. And so the purpose for me will never be completely found and it will always be changing. Um, But just knowing that my gift is there and that I have a responsibility to share that gift, to shine the light, to teach people. um, I don't know. I think the purpose is more of a journey than a destination. Gotcha. That's good. One of the things that, that I'm really big on is and, and I had to remember it, that it's not finding, it's discovering your purpose, mm-hmm. you know, but that's something that I looked at within my life because I wanted to know what my purpose was. And then, so what I always tell people for me is that look at what it is that you do every day effortlessly. And I started to take an inventory of what I do. And one of the things that I do is that I encourage others, you know, I'm a motivator. And so I realized what I was doing, you know, sometime I will come over to people and we'll just have a conversation and they'll say, thank you so much for coming over. I was feeling some type of way, you know, about whatever. And it was like the things that you're saying to me, it's like God sent you, you know? So I, I, I realized what I did and what I love to do is that I like to bring out the best in other people as I'm still, you know, bringing out the best in me, but I like to have conversations to inspire other people. Mm -hmm. So I always say that that is my purpose. My purpose is to help other people, you know, just ignite something in them to understand that they can do great things and just start where you are. So that's one of the things that, that I love doing and I do everywhere I go. And people listen. And that's another thing I thought about. I was like, 
people actually listen. Uh -huh. you know? so, <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. You never know, right? You come up with an idea and it sounds great to you, but the way that you test the market is to see, are you listening or, you know, and ask for like real genuine feedback. And I'm sure you've got a circle around you as well. I always go to my group and say, they're honest with me. You know, I don't yeah. need to, to, to be a cheerleader for me all the time. Need I need you to give me feedback so I can continue to grow and make things better. Mm -hmm. And, and it's something, that's one of the things that, because people tell me about the podcast and they'll say, well, you know, because that's why I started to bring in like on a personal note, because they was like, I want you to not have it so structured. And they told me to bring out more of myself. And so that's something that I had to incorporate into it because I was being stiff and trying to stick to my strip. And so and it was like making more of a conversation. So I noticed that it goes better when it's more of a conversation. And then I'm just trying to stick to my strip. So I'm gradually, you know, getting better at that as well. Yeah. One of the other things I wanted to ask you is that helping others makes you feel what? Um, it makes me feel inspired because then I know that not only are you helping that one person, but then they're going to help somebody else. Someone else is watching them. And so as they do better in their finances and they have better control over their money, someone else is watching them and they're going to ask them questions because we're curious people. When we see something that looks interesting or something that we want, we're going to ask questions about it. So not only do you get to inspire just that one person, but the reach goes far beyond that. And then it can go for generations. So knowing that you can have that kind of positive effect on somebody mm -hmm. and their whole life, like that to me is just inspiring. It is. And I love that. Just to know that you can make someone's day, help someone. It's just all about having that helping spirit. And so I thrive in, in that. And that's what brings me great joy. Yeah. You know, it's to, to help others. So definitely that. And when I meet people, the, the thing that I hear most often is that they like my positive energy. Or yes or that they see the light behind me. And it's so funny because there is a Bible verse that talks about, you know, being the light on mankind. And so that's what I kind of feel like is my role as well, is I always have this light around me and I just need to share it with everybody because it doesn't belong to me. It might be my gift, but I have to share it with everybody. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, I'm enjoying this interview with you. As you can tell, I'm smiling. I mean, because it's coming through. It's coming over. I mean, I just feel all the positivity. It's like, okay, this is somebody I want to continue to talk to. Like, you are super awesome. And it's coming. So I know the audience is going to love this interview and just love the things that you are saying. So what advice would you give the audience about starting a business? Starting a business. Yes. First thing is you have to invest in your own education. There's a lot of unknown factors. Now I talk about money. So that's the important piece for me is you don't always know the expenses. So you want to make sure that your company is set up correctly, that you have your tax, tax status filed correctly and seek out professionals for this because it's different for every state. And mm -hmm. then, you know, you've got your websites and those are some of the basic stuff, but also making sure that you have insurance that protects your business because you work so hard in this company and all it takes is one lawsuit to wipe it out. So if you don't have the correct insurance in place, that's so important. And the other thing is start with one service or start with one product, figure out what it is that you're going to offer first, become a master at that, make sure that's profitable, profitable mm -hmm. before you start adding all the other lines. Cause it's very easy when you become an entrepreneur and that door opens, you're like, Oh, but I can do this and I can do this and I can do mm -hmm. this. Focus one place first, make sure that's making you money and then start adding product lines because if you go too far too quickly, you're just not going to make money. You're going to burn yourself out and then you're going to think, oh, well, maybe I'm not meant to be an entrepreneur. It's just because you weren't coached correctly from the get go. Then you're, you're just kind of setting yourself up for failure because you're only one person. You can't do all of those roles. So focus in one place first. Thank you. That's that's good advice. All right. So now we are at our on a personal note. So what is one thing that you would do differently knowing what you know now? What's one thing? 
Um, I don't know that there's anything that I would do differently because I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. Um, for anybody listening that might be a married couple and they have a company together, my piece of advice for you would be to make sure you create personal time, not just for yourself, but for your relationship. And for me, it was time with God, but we didn't spend enough time just us outside of the business. So it became more of a biz- like a business relationship than a marriage. And the marriage should always come first. So if you're a couple working together, make sure you protect the marriage, because if you don't work on the marriage, then ultimately it may end. And that may not be what you had wanted to, for it to happen that way. But if you don't put in the work, just like if you don't put in your work on the business or your health, then it's going to fail. So make sure that you're protecting the the marriage first. Absolutely. And I also say just to piggyback on that, even when it's just your regular friendships, mm-hmm. you know, you have to work at it because if you don't work at communicating with your friends and being respectful and things like that, it, it will fail. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter how long you've known a person, you have to still not, you know, take the person for granted or the relationship and just, you know, you have to work at um, communication. And one of the things that I am definitely working on is um resolving conflict is a is an area that I realized lately that I was struggling in you know is resolving in a way that I don't hurt people Mm -hmm. or hurt relationships you know that and friendships Mm -hmm. so I am actively (laughs) being a better me in that That's good, but it's a continuation. It never stops. You're always progressing forward, always working on yourself, always learning, being a student, you know, whatever, if it's personal or business life, you, if you don't put in that time to continue until you're not here anymore, then you stop inspiring other people. All right. So what do people misunderstand about you? Ah, So I'm an introvert by nature. I love doing podcasting because I get to make other people talk and put the spotlight on them, but but still draw out the information that I want to utilize to help people. Um, So I think a lot of times when people see quiet people, um, they might think like, I'm not approachable. I'm not social. I don't want to be friends with you, but it's just because I'm a shy person and I'm naturally an introvert that I like to observe a room and I think people mistaken that for something negative versus positive, but really, if you approach me and we start talking, I'm going to have a great conversation with you. It just, I'm not the one that may be seeking you out all the time and being an introvert, that's sometimes hard because I, I do feel like, you know, someone may not talk to me because they're, they're afraid, but it's only because I'm quiet. It's not because I don't want to talk to you. Right. My face looks um, in my real world, not on my podcast. It looks stern. And it looks unhappy sometimes when I'm quite okay, but people are like, you look mean. And I'm like, but I'm really not. So yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So sometimes people don't come over. And then for the ones who do have enough courage to come over, then they're amazed at how much conversation they can get out of me. Yes. But, you know, like looking, they're like, no, I'm not going over. Because sometimes I do have that face on that just says, don't come over here. Don't come over here. So I'm trying to work on that, but I don't know how well I'm going to do with that. Because it's just, I don't even know what this face is doing sometimes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, so so something fun now. So what is on your bucket list? Mm, I would love to get back to traveling. And I think that um, it's my own limiting belief because when I was married, we traveled a lot and I haven't really ventured out traveling as a single person. Um, So I just need to be comfortable with traveling by myself or perhaps seeking out a group of women that would be able to travel with me. Um, Mm -hmm. So I definitely want to get back to traveling. That's been on my bucket list. There's so many beautiful countries that I want to learn more about and meet other people. Um, I do like learning about money in other countries and business in other countries. So just to be able to get back to, to real travel again is on my bucket list. Yes. I love to travel. I love to just get up and go, you know, and just wake up one day and just say, oh, well, you know what? I'll just go to the next state and just explore and, you know, eat somewhere I never ate before. Not like a chain, but just something different. And so I do like to do that. And I am saying that I am going to travel more. 
is one of the things that I put on my plate to do too. So I did travel recently um, by myself and I hadn't done that in years. Um, so I was kind of excited about it, you know, just being in the airport by yourself totally because usually I travel with my kids or mm -hmm. you know the rest of my other family but yeah I did that recently and it was just it was it was pretty good just to you know meet people and just not have nobody else to really talk to I'm just on my own so I it's fun and I did it recently so yeah yeah and my, my introverted self has to become a little extroverted so like if I go to a restaurant I'll sit at the bar just because it's normally well pe where you can talk to people and it's okay right so yeah. that, I like that part of the travel. So and just, you know, getting more comfortable, I think, like you said, just get out there and do it. That's exactly what I did. I went and sat down at the bar and just had a conversation mm -hmm. while I was waiting on my layover. Um, all right. So what is your, and I think you already kind of said it earlier, but what is your favorite, favorite Bible verse? Um, probably... Um, I like Corinthians, so I'll probably go with, you know, do all things through the glory of God. So it's like everything that you do every day, you're thinking about, you know, what would God want me to do? And is this what his plan is? Do I feel like I'm walking in the path that he has set for me? So thinking about like everything that I do is for the glory of him and it's not for myself. So it comes from a very unselfish place. And I think when you come from an unselfish place, you people will feel that and you have a bigger impact. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. That's one of the things that I'm incorporating into my podcast is to end with a Bible verse for the people that are watching. I just want them to find this content, you know, um, useful and, and of value. So I just wanted to not overly make it where they're like, oh, how does she put that in? But just put it in in a way where people will receive it. Mm -hmm. So thank you for sharing that. And thank you for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your time and for inviting me. Thank you. Absolutely. So Angela, tell everybody how they can follow you and support your business. Yeah. So I'm on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, LinkedIn, but definitely tune in to Empower Her Money podcast so we can continue to share the money message with the world. And your podcast is on what platforms? It's on all streaming platforms, oh, okay. including YouTube and um, Roku and Amazon Fire. Awesome. All right, guys. And you can follow me on TikTok and Facebook as Todd Carter, on Instagram as Ivy Todd 10 and Talking with Todd. And until next time, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you so 